Hi, my name's Relevant and I'm dressed up in my best dad working in the yard attire because I'm about to start the process of building myself a shed. Another shed. Hey, that's my tent, chipmunk. You can't hear me. Now, one thing I find myself being in the need for is some outdoor workshop space, uh, a place to, you know, fix on the bikes and the lawnmowers, maybe do a bit of welding or something to that effect. I need some big power. I got a spool of 50 amp cable there, burial cable, ready to go. Initially, I had a shed here before and I moved it because I had this ambitious idea where I was gonna build something like a 12 by 20 kind of workshop space here, but unfortunately my ambitions are bigger than my budget and I've had to scale down. Fortunately, after hitting the Kijiji, I found out of town a nice vinyl shed used, one that I'm quite familiar with. They tend to come apart and go together like Lego, and I knew it wasn't gonna take much effort to take that thing down, pack it up, and bring it back home. So I just finished unloading the trailer, and I have it all laid out here in the uh, one day to be a patio. And the plan is to build it right here. I actually used to have one just like it here, but in order for that to happen, I'm gonna have to move this guy first. So it was actually just last year when I built this shed, which might not seem like a big deal to some. Lots of people build sheds all the time, but it was a monumental undertaking to me because I'd never built a shed before. In fact, I hadn't so much as done any real woodworking project before. I've maybe fitted a couple weird pieces of wood together and rough whatever for random projects, but an actual woodworking project, actual framing, actually building something, I haven't so much as built a birdhouse before, let alone a, a dog house or even a shed. Either way, I, I ended up um, on the YouTube or whatever, researching how to do framing and whatnot, and. I ended up designing this shed from scratch on paper to scale to figure out exactly how to do it. And then day by day, I bought all the materials, ended up building it up all by myself from scratch with literally no help whatsoever. And <laughs> I seem to have nailed it. Now, when I get the load of crusher dust delivered, and once I get it leveled, I'm gonna need to pack it down. And I use this method of, what do I call it again? Water bedding to do that. And I'm gonna need a lot of water to do that. Fortunately, uh, it's been raining and we're expecting even more rain. So I have this sole uh, rain barrels full. But I'm gonna need more than this. So I gotta transfer it over to this big tank right here. But first I'm gonna have to go put this somewhere because uh, once it's full, I'm not gonna be able to move it. Gonna have to figure out how far I could put it based on the length of hose that I have. Oh yeah, that looks nasty. Nice earwig right there. Gonna set up the transfer pump. This is a spare sump pump that I keep around just in case the main one in my house fails. But it also comes in handy as a utility pump. This silly implement's devised out of scrap parts I had kicking around so that I could just hang it on the edge of this barrel and water would go into it. Not bad, actually, that's about right where I wanted it. So I have this remote controller. It's cheapy for a lamp and that's gonna plug into the pump. Now, all I should have to do is press this button And blammo, water is moving. Now you don't wanna let these uh, pumps run dry, so you just kinda pay attention, right? Now one of the tricky parts is getting the rest of the water out of this hose into there. You do that with a little overhead technique. This is draining the rest of the hose into the tank. Figure this tank looks about uh, half full. So, need another rainfall, another full tank there. Get her in here, hopefully get that tank full too, and then, uh, yeah, 
we should have just enough water. It'd be nice to have two barrels full, but one barrel full should be just enough, the minimum amount I'm gonna want. At any rate, this is the spot that I'm gonna put it. And as you can see, this ground is not exactly appropriate. I don't know what kind of gravel this is, but it, uh, it's a little bit too squishy for my liking and I'm gonna have to replace it, which means I gotta dig all this up and replace it with crusher dust. That's gonna be fun. Well, I've been out here for just over three hours now and I've probably been digging for a solid two of those hours. I got about one layer taken off. Still got a lot of this squishy underbelly here. So I think tomorrow I'm gonna pull another layer off. I, I, I kind of need the fill for some rough area over there anyway, so, so squishy. It's like if I just cover this with crusher dust, will it be good? Or will this squishiness still cause stuff to shift? We'll see. So I didn't get to film yesterday on account of rain. It was such light rain, however, I worked in it because my sweat was making me wetter than the rain was. I only got half done because then, you know, the rain kicked in. Hopefully I get that other half finished today. Finally firkin' done, bud. Finally firkin' done. Finally done, finally done. Finally done, yeah, finally done. And that was a little bit more exhausting than usual because I wasn't expecting to do this today, so I had a light breakfast. Kind of ran out of a little bit of energy there after a while, but it's fine. It's done now. Now I have to do some, you know, rough leveling, grading, and take some measurements to figure out exactly how much material I'm going to have to order to fill this in. Of course the sun comes out now for grading. So that I won't be able to see my laser on my grade stick. Yep, can't see the laser on my grade stick. And if I leave this for two seconds, it's gonna fall over. Watch. Oh, look at that boy, I got lucky. I need to utilize ye old laser detector. It's not necessarily the most ideal way to do things, but I have a center point marked on the stick, and then I can kinda get a perspective of how many inches down or up from level or grade it is. So if I put it right here, Nine inches. I dug a hole nine inches deep, at least here. I found uh, my digging got more ambitious as I went along, so it's a bit deeper on this end than it is this end. So what is it over here? She's blipping out at five inches. Five inches on this end, down to nine inches on there. There's a four inch difference here. How about right in the middle? We're about eight inches here too, so Pretty consistent, yeah, I can see just a little bit of hump near the end here, so I should probably grab the rake and <laughs> rake this a little bit over. This reminds me how much of a pain in the ass it's gonna be to level the fresh stuff when I put it in. It's like, oh, you think you can just rake it down? Ah, no, you get stuffed up instantly. Well, let's see what we have here now. Oh, I gave myself two inches. We're now seven inches here. A little bit six inches over here. So six inches and eight inches over here. So yeah, there's a few high spots, but we got roughly an eight inch target. Eight inches of depth which is uh, perfectly what I was targeting for. That's how much I wanted, eight inches. And that'll make a nice uh, crusher dust bed in which to sit this new shed on. It feels a lot more stable already. Like my feet aren't sinking in as much as the other stuff did. Now well, maybe some areas need to be tamped. Oh, all right, it is time to engage in some water bedding. Oh, no, no, get down in there. Oh, there we go, bud. Pumpazine, how is that pupper? This is a improvised water nozzle. This isn't gonna be an impressive spray, but it's gonna work. So here we go. Ah, 
and we're out. That was a lot more than I expected, or at least that lasted longer than I expected. So that tank was something like 60 gallons. Now the idea is, now that we've gotten this all wet, as it drains into the ground, it's gonna kind of virtually compact all the loose dirt together. And that's what I call water bedding. By tomorrow when this is all dried up, that surface is gonna be a lot more firm than it was freshly dug up. Like, not to toot my own horn, but this idea was bloody brilliant. My, there was a thunderstorm last night and my house has been pumping out free water all day long. I have a very active water table here. So I'm harvesting some pump water to use for this groundwork. Ha ha. Yes, it feels relatively firm. I think this is going to do. It's the next day, by the way. I've got the crusher dust on order. Now it's just a case of throwing down some landscape fabric. I've learned from experience some very crazy alien creatures will grow in the darkness underneath your shed. And I'm hoping to mitigate that this time though with eight inches of material over top of this stuff, uh, they might still have some room to root. Got to peel it back, sir. Peel it back. Well, that was pretty easy, but just a little bit more annoying than I expected it to be. It seems that this stuff, the slightest whiff of wind, and it's just like, peace out. So this appears to be the minimum amount of rock action that I need to make sure that it's still gonna be here tomorrow when the truck shows up. It's sad because I, I, I salvaged and collected all these rocks to hopefully use for decorative purposes around the yard, but it looks like they're getting sacrificed, these guys. These little soldiers will get buried once again, never to see the light of day for who knows how long, which is kind of depressing. That's right, I ordered crusher dust and they gave me granular A. And when I went in to talk to the lady who took my order about it, she treated me like I was crazy. Insisted that I had ordered granular A. You had me worry for a minute. It says granular A. My dispatch must have made a mistake if you asked for crusher dust. Oh. But yeah, it's the gran A. Had me worry for a minute. So is this good this, this, for making a shed platform? Yeah, it's actually uh, just as good, yeah. Okay. A lot of people use this here. Well, this is the part of the process where I become unsure of myself. I got it all nice and roughly leveled out, but <laughs> making it perfectly level is something that I find tricky, and it is one of the most important parts of the job. As a consequence, it's also my least favorite part of the job. Once this is done and over with, it's gonna be mostly smooth sailing other than painting. I hate painting. One inch. Oh, come on, the beam's not over here? Yes, it is, it's right there. That's an inch higher. Half inch, two inches. So this side is higher than that side. That's what you're telling me? The important part is that I get the core areas level. So center in the four corners, because those were the stones gonna go down that the base is gonna be built on top of. It's about one and a third, one and a half. Getting closer. Oh, this side's still low. That's half inch. That's like less than a quarter inch. Three quarters of an inch. So quarter, three quarter. This is still higher. One and a half, center is high. Yeah, see this is a lot of fun. One and a half, that's higher than here by quite a margin. Having a little bit of slope might not be bad for drainage. Assuming I can still get the blocks up to where I need them to be. Center, about one and a quarter. This corner, oh, about one and a quarter. 
Okay, that's good. This corner, still low. It's just it's about three quarters. That's a half inch. This side's still low. Hmm. That gets higher. That gets higher. That's starting to go lower. That's getting way lower. One inch. This kind of reminds me of tuning a Floyd Rose. It's just kind of repetitive. Kicking it old school this time. So close, man. It's also very close now. Oh, so close. It's like all four points are practically within an inch of each other. It's to the point where it's probably close enough that I can fine tune it when I seat the, uh, the stones. We're expecting a rainy day tomorrow. So hopefully that settles this all down right good. As you can see, all I really have to work with to pack this down is a lawn roller and a tamper and a fair amount of water. The water part's fun at least. I gotta admit this platform certainly feels more firm than what I had here before. It's barely budging. It's been a few days and there's been some rain and now this thing feels solid AF. I think it's gonna do. Now one of the next steps of the process is I kinda have to map out where this thing's actually gonna sit. That way I can place the blocks, which is one of my least favorite parts of the process, so hopefully it goes smoothly. All right, this is gonna be our first starting point here. Pretty firm, actually, pretty firm. That looks pretty straight right there. I'm assuming we can triangulate this now. Let's stick it on the back peg. Bring it around front peg. Bring it around side peg. Ah, must move brick that is in way. We've run the string all the way from there, over that peg, over that peg, and right here. And now I can fine tune where this guy's gonna end up this way, right there. All right, our width is good. Now let's get our length. And it goes right here. All right, now that that's mapped out, we have to place our brick blocks. Brick blocks, brick blocks. These things are heavy mothers. Now these are gonna overlap the point by about two inches so that it sits on the raised portion, not the sunken portion. So that goes over this much. Yep, by a few inches actually. Pull the peg and it's gonna go right there. Right there like that. Or is it? Ha, it moved up a bit. Right about there actually. Yeah, straighten this out and pop. Monsieur Slug, actually here, Monsieur Slug. Put you relatively close to back home. Now this is my least favorite part of the process, leveling them, which has to be done in three dimensions. Gotta make sure they sit level this way, gotta make sure they sit level this way, and then of course, their height in respect to each other. They have to be leveled from block to block. It's also the most important part of the process because it has to be done precisely. The more precise you are, the less headaches you're gonna have later because your shed has to be level. I'm trying to establish which block is sitting the lowest because I'm gonna have to lower the rest to meet it. That's three, just over three, two and a quarter, two inches, just over two inches, almost the same as the other one. Three inches, that one's proud. So it's these two here. Well, I guess I start with one of these ones. Now this is how I did it the last time and it seemed to work pretty well. I'm gonna silhouette this block. Flips the block out of the way. Dig up this material.
We don't want to disturb this too much because we don't want to loosen up our pack job. Managed to get it pretty level. Not this way though. It's sloping this way. This isn't as easy to work with as crusher dust due to the fact that there's rocks. Mmm, little lumpy. Pretty good. Pretty good. Hey, this is a pretty awesome setback. Check this out. My brick broke. Mother bleeper. I gotta go get another one. Ugh, these things are a pain in the ass to move. Oh, at least I can one hand it now. I haven't got many of these blocks left, so I'm gonna have to be more careful. This is getting close. This way it's pretty close. Oh, oh, oh. The block itself isn't completely true, so... Oh, we might be reaching a point of diminishing gains here. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next block now. And I think I'll fast forward through that process since you pretty much know how it's done now. Oh boy, I do believe I am finally finished. That entire process took me about six hours. Now granted, it's a heck of a lot easier if you're using actual crusher dust. I wasn't. I ordered Crusher Dust and they delivered Granular A. Now it does make a good solid platform, it's just a heck of a lot more of a pain in the ass to work with. You might notice in the last two stones I dug a bit deeper and filled them in with Crusher Dust because, well, it was tricky to get it accurate, but I got all these stones leveled and graded within an eighth of an inch of each other, and so far the level's showing pretty close. Now, the stones aren't completely true, so I'm not gonna know for sure how level they actually are until I've actually built the base, but I'm hoping for the best. My margins were about this close the last shed I built, and it, uh, it came in pretty damn level. The only problem is, on these farther stones over here, they are sinking a little bit lower than the material itself, so I'm gonna have to rework the ground a little bit and, uh, maybe remove a bit of material so they can sit a touch proud. Don't really want the wood of the base touching the ground. You need it to be dry and you need it to be able to keep ventilated underneath. Oh, it's finally the home stretch of the getting this whole pad situation done. It's taken entirely longer than I'd hoped, but there were certain complications and now I just have to skim a little bit of material off the top because now that the stones are bedded they're they're a little bit deeper than the material itself but I like the way the stones are sitting I might just want to double check level but then otherwise I got to get to scraping on this yeah they're all right about where I left them and I think finally, finally, we're done with this. It's taken a while, but I think we're finally done. So I've probably brought the amount of material down to, you know, about, about, about an inch lower, at least underneath the blocks. That way the framework is gonna hover over the ground. It's not gonna be touching the dirt and air is gonna be able to circulate underneath of it. That's, that's important. You have to have air circulation. Now I'm, um, waiting for some more water to build up out of the sump, but it's taken a while. It'll probably be full by tomorrow. And then I think I'm gonna douse this down. I'm gonna be collecting water. I'm gonna be dousing, double dousing this down, making sure it's really right settle. And then finally, I get to start building. <laughs> 